this is Professor Ulam Siddiq. Today, uh, we are presenting a case of a 17-year-old girl who presented um, to us in the outpatient's clinic with epigastric pain, uh, nausea, vomiting, and weight loss for the last five months. She underwent extensive investigations, including upper GI endoscopy, ultrasound, and uh, CT scan of the abdomen and upper GI series. The uh, investigations revealed grossly dilated stomach and uh, dilated first and second parts of the duodenum. CT scan confirmed this to be uh, a case of superior mesenteric artery syndrome as the angle, the aortomesenteric angle was reduced to 12 millimeter as compared to the normal range of 35 to uh, 65 degrees. Also, the uh, aortomesenteric distance was only uh, 4.2 millimeter. Uh, after failed uh, medical treatment, uh, we planned for laparoscopic duodeno jejunostomy. Uh, we used four uh, ports technique, a sub-umbilical port for the camera, and two working ports in the midclavicular lines. Uh, the uh, left port was of 12 millimeter and the right one of 10 millimeter. Uh, five millimeter port in the left anterior axillary uh, line was for the assistant. Uh, laparoscopy was performed and uh, this revealed a grossly dilated stomach and uh, also mm, part of the duodenum was dilated. Uh, these patients usually don't have uh, much fat in the peritoneal cavity and the uh, anatomical uh, landmarks are usually quite obvious. The omentum is pushed uh, upward, uh, so is the transverse colon. The DJ can easily be identified and also the pancreas is visible at the root of the transverse mesocolon. The right half of the transverse colon is pushed upwards towards the liver and the peritoneum at the root of the transverse mesocolon is incised and this is dissected out. The proximal part of the third part of the duodenum can easily be seen here. The C of the duodenum is then mobilized by cockerizing the duodenum. These dense uh, fibrous attachments are taken down. Uh, using a combination of blunt and sharp dissection, care is being taken not to traumatize the duodenum.
the Dublinum is further mobilized towards the midline to achieve maximum length for side to side Dublinogigenostomy. Once enough length of the duodenum is mobilized, the proximal jejunum from the DJ flexure is brought anterior to the superior mesenteric vessels and tension free side to side jejuno jejunostomy is performed After the anchoring suture, duodenotomy and enterotomy is performed, and an end of GIA stapler is used for side to side jejunogigenostomy. With the mobilized uh, duodenum, about 4 cm of stoma is easily achieved tension-free. The common enterotomy wound is then closed using a V-lock suture.
Once the anastomosis is completed, an upper GI endoscopy is then performed. to check for the stoma and also perform a leak test. The leak test was negative. A suction drain was placed uh, close to the anastomosis prior to closure. Following surgery, uh, this young lady's recovery was not straightforward and she kept on vomiting for about 3-4 days but uh, ultimately responded well to PPIs and motility enhancing uh, medications. On follow-up, uh, she uh, in the outpatient's clinic, uh, she was putting on weight and her appetite is good and her symptoms have fully subsided. Thanks for watching.